everybody. It is your boy, Rad Toronto, and welcome back to the Next Level Fear Show. Uh, today, I'm going to continue. I'll be continuing with the topic of why divorce is cancerous to your family. Okay. It is cancerous to your family in, in the worst way because it just never, ever ends. The issues never end. You think they do. You think just because the divorce is finalized that the issues are over. <laughs> Those that have gotten a divorce, you know that that's cap. You know that's all a lie. Okay. Uh, let's get into this, man. I, 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 this is the second episode, okay? And I want to focus on something very specific when it comes to our children that are going through the divorce process, okay, and it's a nightmare. I love that word. Disaster and nightmare, those are my two favorite words, okay, when, when it comes to describing divorce. But when it comes to children, as they age throughout life, throughout the divorce process, because God only knows it takes years sometimes for that to become finalized, uh, the children will never recover. There's always going to be issues. Okay? When children become adults and they get married, what's the first thing they say? I'm not going to be like my mom. I'm not going to be like my dad. I'm going to make this work. That's the first thing they say. And they say that because they're still traumatized as to the life they, they used to live. They don't want to experience what their parents were going through when they were kids because it was a nightmare. It was a living nightmare every day. And so as they age, they're aging and they're like, yeah, I can't, I got to find somebody that this is going to work. And, uh, and, and oftentimes, man, unfortunately, with today's data, it's not working because I think divorce may even be like one out of every two, over 50% right now. It's something, it's something ridiculous, right? So like I said, I want to be specific. I want to be specific when it comes to the kids because both parents – are affected by it and will suffer at some point. Okay. And it doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter whether you know you're the mom, the dad, whether you're the stronger parent or the weaker parent. It it doesn't matter. Because at some point it's all going to come back around and bite you in the butt. That's what divorce does. It's like cancer. When it finally catches up to you, it hits you hard. Sometimes you can't recover. Yeah. I think uh, at the end of this video, or towards the end, I also want to share a video that I saw on Shade Room. I think that video also says a lot to my point. And I'm not trying to be right or wrong here. This is just a discussion in my head that I'm voicing to you guys so that way whoever's going through it and watching the video, just understand that you're not alone, man. We, we have gone through it as well. So I want to start off by saying that I consider myself to be a strong personality. I've always been this way. I was raised to be this way, to always be strong and independent. And I've always been that way. I've always been responsible when it came to finances towards the, I want to say, le later years of my life. I blew a lot of money in my younger years, but I never blew it to the point where I was homeless, you know? So I've always been the stronger parent, in my opinion when it comes to a lot of things. And right now, I would say that 
the reasons why I believe I'm the stronger parent is because I worked hard in my 20s and 30s and I allowed, I was given the opportunity to retire at an early age at 41. That, I had to make a decision because at the time when I was retiring, um, we had just got married for the second time. Okay. So I had to make a decision. Do I go back to work, right? Start another career, make double the amount of money that I was making, right? And have more things. Well, I decided that I was going to be a stay at home dad because we changed our our zip code and we decided to move to Pennsylvania and buy a house brand new. And uh, I said, you know what? You're still in the middle of your career. You continue to work. I got the kids. I'll be a stay at home dad. I'll, I'll be the soccer dad. You know what I mean? Uh, how did that work out for me? Not too good. <laughs> Not too good because 10 years later, right, today, uh, things aren't great. Things aren't great, man. I'll be the first one to tell you. So the sacrifice that I made, right, that selfless sacrifice that I made to be there, to be present in my kid's life was huge. Not many men can do that. Not many men can actually sit home. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was working, doing a lot of work around the house. Pretty handy. Obviously, very proud of the fact that I built this built-in wall entertainment system. It is amazing, right? I do a lot of things. Uh, just because I'm retired doesn't mean I don't work. But any, anyway, uh, not many men get to stay home and take care of and raise their children. All right, and I had that opportunity and I took it. And I said, money doesn't matter. Making extra money didn't matter to me. As long as I'm responsible, as long as I can do what I have to do, and, and that's it. So what happened? We get divorced again. I'm fast forwarding, right? We get divorced again. She divorces me. Now I'm stuck up here alone. <laughs> In this big old house alone, right? I had to be strong again because this is the second time. So now I'm kind of used to it, right? I'm kind of used to the emotions. And so it really wasn't affecting me the way it affected me, divorce number one. And my kids are seeing this, right? So what my kids are also seeing is my frustration, and my anger towards the situation, towards the second divorce, because in my eyes, it was meaningless, uncalled for, unnecessary. And so that frustration, uh, they, they saw it. And so as time goes on, right, year after year after year of going back and forth, back and forth, uh, I wasn't getting the thank you, dad. The thank you, dad, for being who you are and still sticking by us and being there for us and, and doing the things that, let's just say, their mom wasn't doing. The little things, going to ball games and wrestling matches and getting them what they need, uh, family dinners every day at the table, uh, constant conversations, movie nights, debates. Uh, movie nights is a weekly thing, like just doing, trying my best to keep it normal. But it's never normal because at, at some point, right, I get into a relationship and she moves in and 
everything is 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 in my eyes is okay, but is it? Like I said, now now let's just say eight, nine years have passed, right? Or seven years, eight years have passed. What are the kids thinking? Dad is good, right? Dad's financially good. Dad is strong-minded. He's got his beliefs, right? We 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 eat din- din- dinner at the dinner table every day. Uh, Dad cooks. He does it all. Dad does everything. When they go to their mother's house, are they getting the same attention? Are they getting the same? Uh, I'm not going to say love because obviously they are. They're getting the same love. But are they getting that same quality time that I was able to give them throughout the years? And the answer is no. It's no, obviously. If she has a career to attend to, then the career is number one. Kids will be number two. So what happens? When the career is number one and the kids become number two, not including her being involved in a relationship because then it's career number one, kids number two, relationship number three. It's a stressful environment, right? The kids are not getting enough attention. They're not getting enough time. And so what do I have to deal with when they're back in my home the week later? I have to deal with, I didn't get to see mom this week, so can I stay over another another day or two? I didn't get to see mom this week, so I'm going to be on my phone texting mom if she's okay. I didn't get to see mom this week, so I'm going to begin thinking about her more and making sure that she's okay and hoping that she's okay. But at the same time, I am not present with my dad when I'm in my dad's house. And that's what it was like, divorce number one. I remember vividly when my son would come over for the two days because I was only getting weekends at the time. Two days out of the week. And all he would think about is his mother. And there would be some times where he would cry for his mom. Meanwhile, he was there the entire month. I only got two days out of the weekend, every other weekend, four days out of the month. The other 26 days, he and his sister was spent there. So in my eyes, I'm like, why are you thinking about your mom? Why don't you want to be with dad? Like, how come you don't want to spend time with dad? How come you don't miss dad the way you miss your mother? This was in, this is divorce number one. Well, it still happened. Divorce number two. Divorce number two, it still happened. And so as a father, you got to ask yourself, what am, what am I doing wrong? What in the world am I doing wrong, man? Like, is it because I'm a functioning adult? Is it because I'm responsible? Is it because I show up on time? Is it because I'm there that they take that for granted? And they're like, dad's always there. I'm not worried about dad. He got it. Dad's got money. Dad's got a nice house. Dad's always good, healthy. Dad's not old. He's good. But when it comes to their mom, it's like it's an entirely different feeling. What are we doing wrong when we get divorced that the children always side with their mom? Is it a genetic thing? Or is it just that we're just too hard sometimes or not sensitive enough? Not expressing expressing emotions, you know, the way a woman can. Because I can't. Honestly, I can't. I'm emotionally screwed (laughs) 
when it comes to expressing my emotions. Like, I can share certain things with you. I can tell you how I feel and I can paint a pretty picture as to how I feel about a certain scenario, but I'm not going to be crying every week and hugging you. And it's just not me. I wasn't raised that way. Was that my fault? Should I, should I, I don't know, babied them more? Should I, I, I don't know, honestly. But all I got was pushback. And I'm getting pushed back right now. My son still stays at his mother's house now that he's an adult. He still stays at his mother's house. I mean, he comes here, you know, every, I would say, three weeks, and he'll stay here for a whole week or whatever. But he still stays at his mother's house, and for many different reasons. Not because he doesn't like it here. We don't have a good relationship. We have a great relationship. It's just... I don't know if it's a genetic thing where he just needs to be with his mom. I, I don't know. It's wild. Like, I truly believe sons should be with their father. Regardless if there's another man in that house. Only a father can love a son unconditionally. And give him the proper guidance. Only a father could do that to another son. I can't give another son unconditional love, somebody else's son. I, I would never be able to do that. I can give him advice, but that love, you know what I mean? I can hug my son, and he can feel that love and not feel weird about it. That's something that I can do that another man can never do. And so sometimes I question, why are you always at your mom's house? wild but my daughter on the other hand my middle one the pushback that I'm getting now is that she would lie to her mom and avoid telling me the truth or scratch that I said that wrong she would tell her mother the wrong things that she's doing and not tell me what she's doing so, for example, if she had a boyfriend, right, she didn't tell me. She didn't want to tell me. She told her mother. I'm the stronger parent. Does that make her mother the weaker parent? Or does she respect me and not respect her mom? Or does she have a better relationship with her mother? I don't know. It depends on who you ask. But she never told me. And she didn't tell me for a reason because she knew it was wrong. She knew that I did not tolerate or accept dating, having a boyfriend, going out, hanging out at 16. Now, there were other things that, that had occurred that I didn't know about. And her mom did. Does that make her mother the weaker mom? You know, the, the more accepting mom? Does that make her a weaker parent? I don't know. It, it sure doesn't feel that way to me. It feels like I'm getting the raw end of the stick here. It feels like whatever I sacrificed for my children, especially my daughter, it feels like it's all for nothing. That's what it feels like. If you can't look at me and tell me the truth, even if you know that I would be upset or disappointed in you, but you can tell your mom, I don't see, I just don't see the, the logic in that. I don't know if that makes any sense. Why wouldn't you just tell me the truth? Why wouldn't you just come to me? And it's my, my only thought process behind that is that you know what you did was wrong. 
That's my only thought process. You know what you did was wrong. You kept it from me. You kept a lot of things from me, but you told your mom because you knew that there wasn't going to be any pushback. Do you really care what your mother thinks of you? You probably don't. Because if you did, you wouldn't have done the things you did and then present them to your mother as if it was okay. Like, this is what I want to do, mom, and I'm doing it. Having children is crazy. <laughs> Yo. Having children is insane. Let me show you this video. Because this happens all the time. Let me hook this up. And let me show you this video. I saw it on a shade room. Uh, let me pull this up real quick. Check this out, guys. Oh, I just said, like, how did you feel when my mama left you? Like, how did you feel? Like, yeah. what makes you think your mama left me? Because you're old. What? You're old. <laughs> you're old. Okay. You think your mama left me? Yes. Because I'm old? No, that's not actually why. Because you just other things that aren't supposed to be said on the internet oh yeah so you think that's you think your mother left me yes oh okay i know and you, you feel sorry for me because your mother left me no i'm asking how did you feel i ain't feel, i don't feel sorry for you what <laughs> that's funny do you see what i'm saying like jermaine dupree is a millionaire, legend, living legend, insane producer, I mean, rapper, right? Pretty decent, but he's a multimillionaire, powerful, strong, probably gave his daughter everything and is continuing to give his daughter everything. He recorded that video not because, not, not because he wanted to embarrass his daughter, but I'm sure he's like, where does she get the where does she get the audacity to not only speak to me this way, but to think this way? Who's teaching her this? Who's telling her this? I'm the man here. Without me, you don't get anything. Without me, none of this exists. That's why at the end of the video, she's not worried about him. She doesn't care about what he's doing because she knows daddy got it. Daddy's strong. Daddy is always going to be good. So I'm not worried about you. That's, that's how the daughter feels. That's how my kids have expressed their feelings towards me throughout the years of living with divorced parents, going back and forth, having to see two separate ways of living. Daddy lives one way, mom lives the other. And I'm not saying my way or her way was the right way or the wrong way. What I'm saying is that there's two separate styles of living. I could be honest with you and tell you that my my style is black and white study be a good kid don't go out there have sex unprotected and drink and do drugs and none of that don't be disrespectful just don't do normal shit like just be decent kids. Get good grades. Work hard. The only thing you have to strive for is getting good grades. I got everything else. In my mind, that's all I wanted for my children. Be respectful. Right? Don't have me come up to school for anything. That's all I want. 
Straight A's. If you could do that, fantastic. I did my job. I retired and didn't get a second job, and I didn't do that in vain. Yeah. So listen, guys. With all that being said, I'm going through it, and I know you guys are going through it. Everybody's going through it. If we're not out here talking about it, regardless of whether it offends somebody or not, who cares? Talk about it. Talk about it. The only way you're going to get better is through talking about it. I could care less whether my, my, my kids see it. They may have a, a, a certain feeling about what I'm saying. Listen, we could always sit at the dinner table and we could have this discussion. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to leave it here. This is video. This is episode number two. All right. There'll be more. There'll be more as time goes on. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. All right. If you're feeling this, if you can relate to this, man, those of you who are going through it, drop a like, a dislike, whatever. It doesn't matter. Do something. Okay. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.